Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel with another fan TV. Back after another video. If you like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. I'll be doing Rick Ravens training camp every day. Every day that there's news with the Ravens, I'm coming out with it. Um, so, Ravens training camp day six. Let's go over what, what happened on the field. And um, today seemed like it was a veteran day. A lot of guys didn't practice today. So, let's go over the guys who didn't practice, all right? Uh, well, first of all, we're going to say Jawan James did practice. Um, he was out since the stadium practice. Um, he came back today, so that's good. The little nagging injury is not too bad that he was allowed to practice, so that's fine. All right, so now who sat out? Duvernay still has the thigh injury, so they're probably being cautious for him. Boyle, uh, I'm not sure what his injury is, but they sat him out. Now, veteran days, McCarry, Zeitler, Morgan Moses, Patrick Queen, Brandon Stevens. Um... Harbaugh said there's no major injuries in the squad right now. That I guess some of these guys are just sitting out just, just for rest days. You know, it's a grueling, grueling dog days of summer. You don't want to overwork these guys. The Ravens are doing everything in their power to be as cautious as possible. So they got pretty much 100% heading into the regular season. They, they got through week one. Here we are in week two of training camp. They're trying to keep that pattern going. Uh, let's see. Oh, no pads today as well. So everybody, you know, helmet, jersey, shorts. Uh, John Harbaugh said as part of their new training program that they don't want to have pads on as much so that they can uh, continue to work and build rhythm and not have to worry about uh, so much physical contact during these practices. And I'm all for it, man. After what happened last year, Aaron on the side of caution is the best possible thing for the Ravens to do. So if this is part of their new training regimen, I'm all for it. All right. Uh, first, start my special teams real quick. Jordan Stout had a good day punting the ball again. I saw him at the stadium practice. He was he was kicking balls inside the, the five. Today he was kicking balls inside the ten. He continues to do that. And now with Sam Cook gone, being this, well, now Sam Cook is his coach. Um, if Stout can take the lessons from Cook and really become an effective punter, that's another weapon for the Ravens. All right. Obviously, we we don't want to be in a situation where we have to punt so often. But knowing that we have a competent punter back there. It's all it's very good and it's very reassuring. All right, what else? Uh, he also kicked in a 60-yard field goal. Now, that was part of Jordan Stout's appeal pre-draft that he could play kicker and punter. Obviously, Tucker's here to stay for a long, long time. But it's nice to have Stout on the roster just in case anything was to happen. You know, you know, knock on wood, nothing happens to Justin Tucker. But it's nice to have somebody on the field, on the team, excuse me, that can also do that as well. All right. Now, um, offense. Offense had a bounce back day, I would say. Lamar Jackson, 15 for 19. Uh, seemed like there was more rhythm in the offense today. Now, I will say this. He did throw his first interception at camp, but we got to think we're, we're a whole week in the practice, a whole six days in the practice. Um, even when he was hitting mandatory OTAs, I don't think he threw an interception. So this was a long streak for Lamar Jackson not throwing an interception. So he, he gets one in there. Apparently, he was trying to target Rashad Bateman down the field. It might have been slightly underthrown. And the defender made the play on it, which is fine. Now, speaking of Bashad Bateman, they said Bateman didn't have his best practice of the day. Um, which is, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Everybody's not going to be 100% every day. They said that, you know, obviously he was the intended target of the interception. And also, he had a 25-yard pass that Lamar threw to him that he dropped. Now, we don't want to hear about wide receiver drops. I'm kind of hearing it every day. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm concerned, but the, the levels are starting to rise just a little bit. This is something that the guys need to tighten up before we get into the regular season. Now, they have a whole month before then, but wide receiver drops is something that we simply cannot have. You know, we saw what happened last year, um, like a D like the Detroit game with Hollywood Brown. You know, we really almost lost that game to the Lions because so many touchdowns were dropped beforehand. All right. And um, with this receiving core, this was their calling card out of, coming out of college. Bateman, Prochet, DuVernay, they, all their calling card was they had great hands. They don't drop passes contested uncontested, or oh, even Tyler Wallace as well. That, that, that was their calling card, so we needed them to live up to that. All right. Um, now, as far as the defense goes, Tony Jefferson. Tony Jefferson is the guy who made the interception on Lamar Jackson. Apparently, he tipped the ball up to himself and then caught it and made the play. Now, Tony Jefferson's had a pretty good camp so far. Um, he's been up and down a little bit. I know that was the one-on-one the -on -one drill where Isaiah Lockley got the best of him, looking at the line of scrimmage. But... He's bounced back from that, and he's had a couple good practices in a row. Now, Tony Jefferson is interesting because the Ravens have a lot of safeties, so you almost kind of wonder what exactly is his role going to be on this team. 
but I think the Ravens will find a way to use them. The Ravens are going to use a lot more three safety looks this year. And in that rotation, say when Chuck Clark needs a breather, that's when Tony Jefferson can come in. Um, and replace him in that down linebacker kind of role because Tony Jefferson, he's a hitter, man. He's going to come down late, lay the wood on that. Now, we don't want him in pass coverage too much. Even though he seems to be making some more plays in pass coverage, I would still say that's not his strong suit. Um, you want him stopping the run. All right. Um, another interception was Sokobi McLean on Anthony Brown. Uh, Anthony Brown has been struggling a little bit throughout the practices, but he is a rookie. I mean, he's an undrafted rookie. It's all right. You know, I mean, that's what it is. But Sokobi McLean, uh, undrafted free agent linebacker from, I believe, Auburn. The Ravens always find linebackers. They know where they are. They know how to get them. And he's an undrafted guy, and the Ravens always keep at least one undrafted guy on the roster. Could it be a wide receiver, or could it very well be a defender? Um, Skull McClain could make his case to be that guy. Uh, the Ravens aren't extremely deep at middle at inside linebacker. They're really not, you know. You got Josh Bynes. You got Patrick Queen. Everybody else after that's kind of a toss-up, even Malik Harrison. Uh, we got we have to see him show improvement on the field. I haven't heard his name too much. Maybe he can make some noise in preseason when the games start. But Scott McClain has a real shot to make this roster, in my opinion, because the Ravens, as of right now, I'm going to say the Ravens have two competent that I can I can depend on inside linebackers, Bynes and Queen. They're going to need more than that. So we'll see we'll, we'll see who ends up backing those guys up. Oh, one more offensive highlight before we get up out of here is Benjamin Victor had another good practice, uh, multiple catches. Uh, I think one they said was like a 20-yard gain over the middle of the field. Ben Victor is a big target. He's at least he's somewhere between 6'3 and 6'5, long, lanky, go up and get it kind of receiver. Um, I highlighted him in the training camp practice video that he made some plays doing that, and he's back here making some more plays again. He's a guy that can also compete with that wide receiver five position. The Ravens have a lot of guys who can come in and do that role. We're just going to see who's consistent enough to win that job. Jalen Moore, Benjamin Victor. Then you got the UDFAs, uh, Shamar Bridges, Slade Bowden, Makai Polk. So they, it's, it's a competition. It's, it's really going to be one spot for four or five receivers because nobody seems to think the Ravens are going to carry six receivers just because I guess they'll carry four tight ends and that kind of chops out a receiver spot and then the running backs as well. So um, if the Ravens only carry five wide receivers, that fifth spot is up for grabs from a lot of different areas, a lot of different places. Um, so we'll see who can uh, maximize their opportunity and really snatch that spot. So it's like it was a more chill, low, uh, low, low key day of practice. Just a solid day all around. The offense bounced back, had a good day, but you want to hear this offense has the good day when it's, when the pads come on as well. Uh, because when the pads come on, you know that's when it's real football. Obviously, this, this is nice to hear that they had a, a decent day. You don't want them to struggle. But I want to hear that they had a good day when the pads are on, the defense is hitting, and it's more physical out there. But that's the report from today, day six. We'll see what happens next time. And that's your boy Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. I'm out.